So for the past 20 years, CSWIP has remained fairly constant. Now, as you can see from the title of this video, things are changing. Now, the last time anything really changed with the 3.1 exam in particular was a change from a, a general multi-choice and a written technical paper over to 100% multi-choice. But the five parts of the exam stayed fairly much the same. This change compared to that is major. We're losing some parts, we're gaining some parts, we're rearranging some. And in this video, we're gonna have a quick look over what these new parts are and how things are going to move forward from the current sort of expected release date of April 2023. So as it stands up till April this year, the 3.1 is broken into five different parts. So we've got a general, which is 30 multiple choice questions covering a bit of everything from weld failures to general welding technology. The technology paper, which is 60 questions and is intended to be more in depth than the general. And this is where we get questions around hydrogen cracking, solidification cracking, laminar tearing and the like. We have a plate which we have to inspect. Uh, that's a plastic sample, root and face, make a report and fill in 20 multiple choices. Then we have the same for a pipe and then we have two macro sections to look at. Uh, right now these are all multiple choice uh, paper questions and since really the end of last year, I'd say about October time, it's been moving over to them being completed electronically. So either at a computer in a TWI test centre or on an iPad. So as you can see, we're losing the pipe and the macro. They're gone. You From April, any new candidate will no longer do those exam pieces. That then leaves us with the general technology and plate, which are then being sort of amended and changed and added together, which will allow us to have a theory paper one, paper two, and a practical exam. And that's what we're gonna go through right now. So the theory paper one. So it's 120 minutes for 80 questions. So that's about just over a minute per question. And they're broken up into some leading questions which are two parts so you can see here we've got uh, question 1a and question 1b so question 1a says what mode of failure would occur up to 72 hours after welding so here we would be looking for hydrogen cracking and then b connects to a and saying okay from that the answers below what would be the reasons for this failure so then of course the best one there would be hydrogen. Here's the, the sort of rub and the thing that will catch people out. If you get the question wrong in part A, you are more likely to get the question wrong in part B. And the idea here is to, well, my understanding of it anyway, is to understand the candidate's ability to know the right answer but then to be able to apply logic to that answer in the real world, um, which will make it easier for some and harder for others, really. But we'll get a lot of leading type questions. And then there'll be some drag and drops as well. So here we've got a, a question one, A, which says, what are the factors of the fact hydrogen cracking? Now, You've, you'll have two boxes because this is like on a computer or on an iPad and you have to drag all the correct answers into one box and all the incorrect answers to the other. So if you do this, you did something like this and we had four correct answers and we got everything right, all the correct ones right and all the incorrect ones right, then we get all four marks. But here is a negative mark and alert. Okay, If you were to put an incorrect answer into the correct, then you minus the mark. And 
that's the one. If you put two correct answers in, you minus the mark and you can only get two, even if all the other four are correct. So you have to make sure you are fully certain of which are correct and which are incorrect. You can't just put every answer into the correct box and gain all the marks because that would that would destroy the system really, wouldn't it? So yeah, drag and drop type questions. There will also be adding the missing word. That will be where we complete a sentence, something like hydrogen cracking is also known as which of the following. Uh, and you'll have A, B, C, D to, to select. So it could be cold cracking, delayed cracking or, or something like that. But there'll be an answer to fill in the, the missing part of that. So that's the theory paper one. 120 minutes, 80 questions uh, where you have drag and drops, fill in the missing word and two part questions, leading questions within that. Theory paper two is, I, have, I haven't got really any straightforward examples of this because you will be given four welder qualifications, four WPSs and a drawing, and you will be asked questions around those documents. So it's not to create a welder qual or create a WPS, but how to take information from it and check acceptance criteria or qualification ranges and things like that. So it could be, you know, within a weld, welder qual one, is the welder qualified to weld with TIG welding? And then you go, you find the welding process, see what the welder qualification is used for, and then answer your question uh, provided. Now you can see that this is probably the biggest part which will change the way that which we teach this CSWIP course. Um, and now we will actively have to teach welder qualifications, WPSs and drones, which is, I think is a really good step forward. It's something I've done in my courses for, for a little while, but it's been an, an extra. Now it will be the core of, of the course. And I think it's what, what welder, welder inspectors need. They need to know how to check qualifications and WPSs and drones. And then we'll move on to the practical part. Again, big change here. So you will be given eight segments of weld. So imagine the plate sample, if you've seen any of those in the past. But, so it's, it's very much the same. Cut into 50 millimeter segments, width for segments. So you can see plate, weld, and plate on the other side. And you'll get questions like within sample one, which of these defects are present? Now I've gone A, B, C, D, E here, but the list will actually probably go to like J, K sort of level. Now not every defect is on the sample. You again, like with the drag and drop type questions, you will have to decide which ones you can see. Now, as before, there's a negative marking alert here. So you cannot just say, oh, well, I think all the defects are on this sample. Because every question you get wrong will be removed from the total marks you can make. So if you decided there was slag, undercut, and concavity on your sample, and the slag and undercut were correct, but the concavity was wrong, then that would change your... Um, your results so you'd have two possible mark because there's only two right but your minus one for the incorrect so you gain one mark total so you've halved your marks by over complicating your answer so you've got to be careful here now if you've ever done a negatively marked exam sometimes what you end up doing is really thinking can i commit to that answer if you can't, it might not be a good idea to, to write it down or select it as, as one of your things. Every answer that goes down here, you must be certain that you can see that defect. And it could be multiple defects. There might be one, you know, there might be five. But if there's five and you put six, well, you only get four. 
So that's it for the very quick review of how the C-Swift 3.1 is changing. I'm trying to keep this around 10 minutes video. We'll do some further videos to refresh sort of general type questions, how to deal with questions, especially the leading uh, uh, questions, which are the two parters. Uh, the, 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 my honest opinion is this is a good change. For a long time, I've believed that the free one exam in particular leads students into the answer. So during your practical, it would say, you know, with reference to undercut, how much do you have? And I used to say to my students, well, you know, when you're doing your exam, look at the question. If you haven't seen any, quick, give it a re-look, see if you've got any undercut, and then make your decision. It's, it's going to make you as the student understand defects. And that, that's a good thing right, for, for yourself and for the industry. And for me as a welding engineer, trying to deal with the fallout of incorrect calls and, and all that type of thing. So if you haven't already, feel free to hit the subscription button below. Good luck with your studies and we will see you in the next one.